Today we are going to make some sweet pepper chili salsa. This is a really fun recipe. You've got the, the multiple different colors of the peppers. You've got that lovely little bit of chipotle powder in there that gives it a little bit of heat and flavor as well. And then you have the chili pepper, which gives it like this this really fun added yeah. flavor for us. Yes, yeah. just a nice spice to it. Yeah, no. Well, and I really, really like a lot of peppers in my salsa. Yeah, Me we've too. always we've always done that in mine. Okay, well let's start throwing this together because yes. we need to get it all mixed and onto the stove. And we've got a great big pot for this one. We probably don't need one quite this big, but better too big than too small. Yes. Um, well, and when we do multiple recipes around here, we have to have lots of pots. When that's we do true. Pretty much everything. Yeah, because yeah, we're doing like four different salsas today, all at the same time. So yeah. it, it gets a little crazy trying to figure out what pots you're going to use. Yeah. My kids are excited about this, though, because we're out of salsa. Now. Yeah. No, it's a good time for you. So we're going to start with 10 cups of tomatoes. Now these tomatoes have been blanched, peeled, seeded, and diced. If you're unsure how to blanch a tomato, go ahead and check out our Canon Basics video that we have a tutorial on there for you. I'll jump straight to onions here. So we have three onions that have been chopped up. We really like to use the sweet onions because we feel like it gives it a little bit better flavor. Then we're going to do five cups of multicolored, yeah, not tomatoes, peppers. peppers. <laughs> <laughs> we have one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. Let's pass that over to you. We also have half of a cup of some seeded diced jalapenos. It's a good idea to use gloves for this, and <laughs> yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Emily got her eye pretty good. You got night. like I got a spot <laughs> on my eye here, and I sliced open my finger, and yes. <laughs> it was not because of a knife. I just happened to be a little clumsy sometimes and smashed my finger. Oh, no. um, half of a cup of minced garlic. And we were just like leveled right there. <laughs> we <laughs> built this up. Full. Yeah. Let's Can see. you reach it? Here, I'll give I you a couple of those. Sure. And then we're going to go with three tablespoons of the chili powder. We have one, one tablespoon of salt. Two tablespoons of cilantro and half of a teaspoon of the chipotle pepper powder that Marie loves so much. Yes. Okay, great. Get that half off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we're just going to mix this up, put it on the stove, bring it to a boil, and allow it to simmer for 10 minutes. Let all of those spices and, and vegetables marry. You can smell the chipotle in here pretty well, mm -hmm. especially as I'm so short and have to get my face in there. Yeah, right? There we That's go. the one thing with these nice tall pans like that is is you uh, you do have to go pretty deep in to get the stuff out. Well, they've been really convenient for mm -hmm. our tomato canning sessions. I noticed actually quite a few people have been buying them from our shop online. So yeah. if you need one, they're in the canning equipment section of our. Uh, affiliate store. Okay, so we're looking for a half an inch of headspace, okay. so I'm going to we'll add a little bit more. Let me start putting this in and scoop some more. I'll just take some from here. Maybe one more. Perfect. Okay. And as always, if you get anything on the edge of your jar, just go ahead and wipe it off with a clean cloth. I went from not enough in the last one. It's too much. To too mm -hmm. much in this one. Let's try that. Mm, still a little much. If you need extra, you add it. And if you put too much in, just use that same spoon and scoop it back out. Pretty easy fixes. The chunkiness of salsa makes it sometimes kind of difficult to gauge as you're dumping it in there. Mm -hmm. But not a big deal. We need to tuck that down. How about you tuck down and we'll do that. Add in a little bit more. I'll just hold on to some here. Okay. What's that? more. I 
kind of like that funnel because it's slightly see-through. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you can just barely see yeah. the lines there. Or maybe tiny. There we go. You can be picky about the headspace if you want to. I go back and forth. Some days I'm picky and some days I'm not. It does make a difference on if your stuff's going to seal or not, though. Yeah. Because they determine the headspace. It's based on how much the food contracts and, and moves as it gets heated and how much of an air pocket you need there to suck that lid down. So it is important. And especially if you're going to be entering your jars into a county fair or a state fair, which really I need to highly watch recommend. It. Yeah, you really need to watch it carefully. Yeah, we really support the local arts mm -hmm. and fairs and well, you know, it gets it gets canning out there. It shows people the different things that you can do and, and gets them a little bit excited about it. And it's a good way to connect with other canners and get yeah, ideas. It really is. I love going through the canning sections. I might have to do a little we're gonna need more jars. Like okay. three more? Grab you think so, huh? Yeah. We like it when we need extra, when the recipe goes far. Right, nothing wrong with that. Okay. We might end up only using two, but that's okay. We can put it back. Save it for the next recipe. Yep. We're doing four different sauces this year. My fun. kids are happy about that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we're going to spill over. Here you go. It's going to leak out. We're getting really cold in here. I know. No, in the canner. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I, know. <laughs> I don't know if we can fit another one. <laughs> Without taking some water out? Or is it just full? No, it's just oh, full. Yeah, it's full. Yeah. Which we like. Yes, we like nothing to have. wrong with a full canner. Okay, we're going to get rid of this, and I'm going to lift... And dump. Okay. It's still plenty in here, but I'm too short to really reach it. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without making a on the way. Let's get this going. Okay. Let's do that one. And then we do, I think we have enough. Ooh, we'll have to remove a little bit out of that one. Yeah. But I think we have enough for one more jar. Great. And then what we may do is just make a little boiling water bath because we've got both of ours going right now but when you're using these little jars especially you can make your own we'll put a little link here to show you how to do that well we're gonna even get taste testers out of this go ahead and just throw it back in there well and if you guys want this recipe to download and print off go ahead and head on over to our website the link is in the description below that takes you right to this post with the recipe that's a good batch. Yeah. I like big batch. batches. I don't mind that at all. More rings? Let me get them behind you. Oh, we only need the two. Perfect. It's so handy to be able to make a little water bath like this. It is. It is. So now we're gonna go ahead and process these for 20 minutes if you're at sea level. We're at 1,200 feet, so we're going for 25. If you're unsure how the altitude affects your canning processing time, go ahead and check out our Canning Basics playlist. On there, you'll have a tutorial for altitude and for how to use a water bath canner. The sweet pepper chili salsa is out. It is. I think it looks beautiful in this jar. Actually, I'm really excited for you to try this one too. But it has just that little extra element with the chili mm -hmm. pepper in there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I like just a lot of the variety of the garden mm -hmm. peppers in mine as well because we have all the different yellow, orange, and red, red peppers. Right. Oh yeah, it makes it so pretty to look at. So let's give it a try here. Mm -hmm. We'll be competing for some salsa here. <laughs> right. The key is to get like the right ratio of ingredients on your chip, right? Mm -hmm. That has good flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has no heat to it, mm -hmm. but it, I mean, you can really feel the sweetness. I actually really like it a lot. I like it too. This is one that I do for my kids a lot. They really like this one. 
Mm -hmm. This is just a good sit down and chow down salsa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's good. I can see you have kids would really love this. Yeah. One. No, like it you just said it's just, super sweet with just mm -hmm. that little bit of chili pepper mm -hmm. in there. And so, super which good. essentially just turns it from garden vegetables to salsa. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. So I think this is one that you would really like, especially if you're not into the spice as much. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, go ahead and let us know what you think of it. And let us know if there's anything fun that you do with your salsas. Okay, sweet pepper chili salsa is coming out of the water bath. Such a great salsa. Yeah, I love all the ones that we're doing today. So we did sweet pepper chili salsa. We jalapeno. Did a, yeah, jalapeno. We did a basic tomato salsa. And, and then really fresh, lovely uh, party salsa. Yeah, so it's really fun. They're all mild, great for kids. Mm -hmm. um, you could always add spice if you wanted to, but it's amazing the different flavors that you can get out of very similar ingredients. Exactly. Yeah, it's actually quite amazing. Like, pretty much every, these recipes have the same ingredients and everything. Party salsa has the added cucumber. It is just a matter of the amounts that you mix and mm -hmm. then the seasonings and spices and stuff, and it just created four completely unique and different yeah. recipes with just what you can get out of your garden. Which is so lovely because when you have that fabulous yield in the garden, and even if you don't have a garden, you right. can get great deals in the summertime at the, at the grocery store. I remember and farmer's last market. Yeah. I love, and just like roadside stamps. Yeah. I love to stop at roadside stamps. Mm -hmm. I remember I got tomatoes last year for like 25 cents a pound or something oh, nice. like that, which was fabulous, yeah. you know. Well, and here where we live up in the Pacific Northwest, here in the valley, there is so many fruit and vegetable stands mm -hmm. just everywhere. And so half the time I like to just go do my grocery shopping by going around to the different stands right, and seeing right. what local farmers are well, putting out there. And I like that because I feel like all the money is going right to the farmer. Exactly. I do too. And we would love it if you would like and subscribe. Bye.